Before we begin today's video, I'd like to take a minute to request you, our viewers, to subscribe to The Print. As you know, we have a lot of young reporters who go out across the country and bring you stories across a gamut of topics. And we cannot do this without your help, your support and your love for our work. So please do follow the link in the description below to subscribe to The Print. Imagine you lived on Saturn. Just looking up and you'd see the icy glimmery rings around the planet. It's shiny and pretty. It's kind of tough to imagine what that would even look like or feel like. But now, imagine the same thing existed on Earth around 450 million years ago. Not with so much detail and not as high resolution as Saturn's rings are, but the Earth actually turns out likely had a ring at this point. In this time period, 450 million years ago, if one of us were around, if we had been living on the equator, it would have been much cooler than what the equator should have been at this point of time. And that's because this giant ring that existed around the Earth blocked the sunlight enough to create a global cooling event. If any life had then looked up, they would have seen a thick but a single layer of a giant ring around the planet. Soon, this entire ring would then fall on Earth like a giant, rocky, slowed down rainstorm, making dents all over the planet's surface. In orbital mechanics, there's something called the Roche limit. When a moon orbits a planet, when any rock orbits another space rock, at the right distance from the host rock, it stays in orbit. This satellite or this moon is effectively going around a planet because what happens is that this moon is falling down towards the planet because of the planet's gravity, but just as it falls, the planet curves away. That's what keeps this moon in orbit. So it ends up swinging around and around the planet. But what happens if this moon comes a little bit closer directly to the planet? When anybody enters the certain zone beyond which they cannot be in orbit, it's called the Roche limit. And this body cannot survive as a singular piece of rock. It will be broken up. So this close to a planet, any rock or moon would break up into many other pieces that would then start to orbit the planet. This is what happened 446 million years ago at a time period called the Ordovician. This time period, which lasted from about 485 million years ago to 443 million years ago, was one of the coldest periods of Earth's history. And interestingly, during this period, there was also a sudden and steep rise in the number of meteorite impacts on Earth's surface. This team studied and mapped around 21 asteroid impact craters that struck Earth during this time period. And they noticed that all of these impact craters were at a certain angle from the equator. In the Ordovician, nearly three-fourths of the Earth's crust was outside of the equatorial region. Using the data that they had and the simulations that they were able to make about how the continents were moving, one of the perfect and most well-fitting explanations for the angles of this impact craters and locations of these meteorite strikes is a rainfall of rock over a period of millions of years. And for something like that to happen so regularly and so intensely in such a very specific pattern, there should have been rocks in orbit, which were the source of these hits. And for these many rocks over these many millions of years, there should have been a very large body, which at this time would have broken up and collated into a ring orbiting the Earth before disintegrating entirely. Effectively, what happened was a large asteroid came too close to Earth, and this is much before another larger one hit dinosaurs. But when this asteroid came close to Earth, it got broken up above the Earth and became multiple smaller rocks that began circling the Earth slowly around the equatorial region, eventually becoming a ring and then starting to rain down on the planet. More evidence is needed for this theory, of course, but findings are very interesting and this specific simulation can explain a lot of ancient climate, geological record and more other such pieces of data from the past. Today, it's kind of hard for us to imagine what it would look like to have a ring around the Earth over the equator that blocks out the sunlight. 
There were definitely no humans back then and not even mammals large enough like today to have experienced it. But the scientific community is amazing and paleo artists have come to the rescue. The speculative study has set off a trend of really amazing art with Ordovician life looking up at the sky and seeing a new and giant magical ring around the earth that starts pummeling projectiles down on them. 